Hello, our face cam is gone, Unreal is open, that means it's time to answer another question from the Answer Hub. So, let's come over here. This one has been posted by Flunculina. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. Uh, it has um, progressed a bit here. Although he's still looking for, or he or she's still looking for an answer. We're just going to deal with the original question. Keep it nice and simple. Okay. So, this person here has one persistent level with basic lighting and stuff. Has two stream levels. One of the stream levels, he spawns five cubes. Okay. From another blueprint class. Okay. And do that from the stream level blueprint. Everything works fine. The streaming works. But when he unloads the streaming area, the cubes stay behind. And each time he loads them, they double. So he's wondering how to take care of this. So we're going to look at handling the stream load yourself and working with an array. And we're actually going to throw in doing custom loops in there as well. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is set up our level here. Yes, we're back in our soccer game. Set up, set up our level to deal with some streaming. So we're going to add a volume class. We're going to get a trigger volume. Okay. And we're going to put it right there. And we are going to tell this trigger volume to load or name it load crap. Okay. We got load crap right there. Now we are going to add some crap to the screen that can be loaded. So we're going to grab a cube. We're just going to move it around. We're going to make some obstacles for our course because we know that's what soccer is all about is dealing with obstacles and whining like a little baby. Okay, so there is our soccer field with a few obstacles in it. Sure, let's add just one more make them good and random okay now we're going to select all of our obstacles whoops and for those of you who don't know what the level streaming is that we're talking about uh what it is is that you can have your main level here and then sub portions of the level to get loaded in so in case you had a room you don't want to load until you've unlocked the door things like that it can be very helpful. So we're going to go into our window here, Levels, and we are going to create a new level. Do -do. Create new with selected actors. That's what we want to do. And we're going to name this one Crap. Okay, so we've got Crap. It's got our selected actors. If we turn off the viewing of Crap, look, our actors disappear. Okay. So now that we've got our two levels set up, we are going to go into our main levels blueprint, open level blueprint, and we are going to set up a, we're going to set up that trigger box we have there. So we're going to event begin, begin play. When we begin play, we are going to set up an overlap event. Okay, we are going to overlap, bind, I believe is what we want to do. Bind event on actor begin overlap. We are going to do a reference to load crap. Come on, load crap is out there. I know load crap is out there. That is what we called it, right? This trigger box right there is load with a space, then crap. We're going to load crap. Why are we not getting a reference to load? Create a reference to load crap. Wow, it's not often you have to have syntax on to find something. OK. 
Okay, and we are now going to overlap. Find event to on after begin overlap. There we go. So we just had to reset that up. And then we're going to do a custom event load streaming level. Ah, it's got an extra dash in there, but that does not matter. Really? Not a rewrote node, we want to add an, add an event. Yeah, sometimes it's just all in the direction you pull your nodes. Load streaming level. There we go. Okay. So when load crack is overlapped, we are going to load our level. That's it. So if we just start with streaming, we can load a streaming level. Come on load stream level and we want to put our level name right here so crap and when it loads we do want to make it visible and that's it when our trigger box is overlapped we're going to load a level and make it visible let's go test that this works uh, i think it's that corner i put it in so boom kick our ball over to the corner and see if it loads some obstacles for us Ah, it's gonna make it over there. Make it. Make it. Is that the wrong corner? Is it that corner? No, not that corner. That means it's that corner. Which it's gonna miss that box. Trigger horrendously. There we go. We loaded crap. Okay. So when we overlap our box, right here, it loads in our streaming level. Perfect. So now what we want to do is set up a dynamic spawn structure in our load in our dynamic level. So we're now going to open up our sub levels here. We now have crap, and we're going to edit crap, and we're going to set up our own custom loop. So when it begins play, we are going to start with a sequence. Sequences are fun. We are then going to go to a gate. Yeah, just a regular gate. So we're going to enter the gate. But first we're going to open it. So we're going to open and enter our gate. Okay, so after we open and enter the gate, we are going to Spawn actor from class. We are going to spawn our ball actor. Because we're playing soccer, we may as well have more balls out there. And in the transform, we are just going to give it a little bit of height. A little bit up on the z-axis so they aren't spawning in the same position. Do -do -do -do, that is that. Now, what we need to do here is create a new array. So we're going to do an array of new actors. Okay, new actors. This will be a actor reference array. So reference array. Bring that out here. And we are going to add a unique item to the array. Okay, and this is another one where pin order matters. If we do this, we cannot add our array, but if we do this, we can add our balls, okay? So remember, if you're having issues connecting up a couple nodes, try pulling the strings in different directions. So when we add a ball, we are going to add it to an array, okay? That's it, okay? But we want this to happen over and over and over again. So we're going to add a delay. And 
enter our gate again. Okay. I'm going to do a delay of three seconds. Okay. So now, when we start playing, we are going to open a gate and enter it. We are going to spawn a ball. And we're going to save a reference to that ball. And then we're going to do it all over again. So that should now... So I kicked at that corner first, so I guess this corner. Please be the right corner. Otherwise I have to run to that other one. My character movement is not super quick. Ah. There we go. We should have another ball spawn. Yeah, we should have another ball spawn. There we go. Perfect. So we've got balls spawning. Okay. And let's show the issue that our good friend on the answer hub was having. So now we are going to use spacebar to unload our level. Okay, just as a quick and dirty test. We're going to do stream, unload stream level, unload crap. Oh, let's make sure we stay to our naming conventions with the capital letter. Okay. So, please be the right corner. I feel like it's not. Okay, I have to go behind the other player. Okay, so there we go. So we spawn a ball, we spawn a ball, we spawn a ball, and then we're going to unload the level. But look, our balls are still here. And this is the issue that our good friend on the answer hub was having. Okay? So let's fix this. So before we unload the level, we are going to get our array again. And then for every item in the array, so for each item, so we're going to run a for each loop of our new actor array. And then for every item that we come across, we are going to destroy that actor. Okay. So for each ball we find, we want to destroy it, along with its hopes and dreams. Then, once we have destroyed all the balls, so once we've completed going through that loop, we are now going to unload our level. Okay? But you know, just for tidiness sake, we're going to do one more thing here for our particular setup. So we're going to move that along. We are going to copy our sequence with just control C and control Z. V. So we are going to first close our gate so that we're not making any new balls. And then we're going to clean up our current balls and then exit the level. Let's give this a try. So if I come around the character and then I kick into this corner, I should have found the right trigger. Did I do it wrong? No, I did it right. Yay! So we're going to get a bunch of balls here, and because it's soccer, we're going to kick some around. Ooh, balls. Come on. Drop all the balls. I should have put that timer to be a little quicker. But yeah, that's how to set up your own custom loop, which is nice instead of using the tick event, because then it's Real easy to set your own time, and you free up the tick event for other things. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of balls here. And if we keep... <laughs> we got a goal. Uh, if we keep spawning more balls, eventually we are going to have performance issues. And I scored another goal. So at this point, we're going to clean up our mess. So we're going to hit space. And look, all the balls, except for our original one... Which, where the hell are you? There you are. All the balls, save for our original ball, are gone. Until I kick it to the corner and we get more balls. Missed the trigger box, of course. But yeah, so now when we close, we remove all the balls. So that's it. Hopefully that answers the question, but let's go through a quick 
run through again just to show what we've set up. So we have our persistent level, okay? Our main level with all the stuff we regularly need. And we also have our sub level of crap that will load in these obstacles. Okay? When that sub level loads and unloads, it just takes with it or brings with it what is initially in the level. Anything new that we spawn is being spawned to the persistent or to the main level. When we want to get rid of crap, okay, actually we're going to cancel that operation and we're just going to open our sub-level blueprint here. When we get rid of crap, we are going to take with it all the actors we spawned with it or all the items we spawned with it. So, whether it's our balls that we're spawning here in a loop, or whether it's an enemy you've added, or whether it's parts of a destructible mesh, or a respawned item after it's been destroyed, whatever it may be, just for every new item that you're adding, add it to an array named whatever you choose, okay, and add it as a unique item so that you don't end up getting duplicates of the references. Okay, and then when you're unloading the level, which the loads and unloads of the streaming level, you'll now have to handle yourself instead of letting Unreal handle it for you. But now when you unload the level, just before doing so, you can run through an each loop for every item in that array and just make sure it's destroyed. So we clean up our own mess before unloading the level or moving on to the next level. I hope that's helped answer your question. If it has, please leave a like on the video here and, you know, give me a one up on the answer hub if it has helped. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you all next time and thanks for watching.